Hey guys, in this part of the video, I'm going to talk to you about the roof of this building. Now, I've already completed the entire roof. There's just a couple small details I have to finish up here. But I'm going to walk you through and just show you the structure of this roof and how to set up the basic structure and function of your roof. Um, for me, roofing is not a very enjoyable part of the building process. It's probably the part I like to do the least. So I just went ahead and put up the whole roof, um, did all that, plus I had to have it up for the protection of the building. So I'm going to show you um, how I do the insulation in here in the ceiling and um, how to get airflow and ventilation through the ceiling and the roof um, and some of the more important things like that. Not necessarily how to actually put the pieces of the roof together. Um, so I'm going to take you out and show you around here. So here is the completed roof. It turned out really nicely in my opinion. Um, so this roof is pretty thick as far as the rafters I used. I used 2x10s and a 2x10 is actually 9 and a quarter inches wide. So there's a lot of space in this roof for insulation which I'll show you in a minute here the kind of insulation I used so it's a it's a cathedral ceiling it's totally open inside um, so I had to have very thick rafters in order to get enough insulation in that ceiling uh, there's metal roofing this is your standard kind of metal roof I like it uh, it's pretty easy to put up, pretty long lasting, and uh, if you want to do water collection, it's good for that as well. You'll see the details on the outside. I have um, I put a lot of work into the detail for the roof. This is more just for looks and aesthetic. Um, it gives it some protection, but these uh, fascia boards they're called those dark brown stained boards along the edges of the roof um, that's just more decorative and then you see the uh, silver drip line above that between the green and the dark brown there's that silver that's more decorative as well um, so the exterior of the roof looks really nice I just like to make the roof look nice um, so I'm going to take you around, show you some of the details now. So again, you can see the detail here. I'm going to walk underneath now. And underneath here is still unfinished. I have not installed the soffits yet. So you can see the actual structure from here. You see the rafters as they come off out from the ridge beam in the middle of the building. And then there's this rough fascia board here, which connects them all on the ends. And you'll see the rafters sit on top of that top plate. They have that cut, it's called a bird's mouth cut. And it helps the rafter to set on top of the top plate. Just Google how to do a bird's mouth cut for a rafter. It's a common um, framing technique for roofing. So we go around here. I'm going to take you inside. Again, you can see um, here I actually extended the roof out two feet. Um, on the front and the back, it extends out two feet. Uh, you just use those extension boards to bring the roof out just make your ridge beam long enough so the ridge beam goes from there all the way to the other side which is 16 feet in this case and one thing you can see here right now um, there's OSB board which sits on top of all the roof framing and then See that black part up there? That's actually a gap. So there's no OSB there, there's actually a gap. 
and I have that gap that goes all the way along the ridge beam um, so there's actually um, a hole kind of at the top of the roof where the ridge beam is that allows for air to flow out the top ridge vent and actually before we go in let me show you how that works so the soffits are not installed so I can show you how this works go around this side might be a little hard to see but you can see the insulation here and above the insulation you have a gap you always want to have at least an inch gap between your roof sheathing and the insulation that allows air to flow up through the soffit through this gap you can maybe see yeah you can see that ridge vent gap up there so the air can flow all the way through here and then up out that ridge vent so that's good for a couple of reasons you want to have a ventilated roof if it's all just totally sealed and there's no airflow moisture can build up and uh, it can get really hot in your building so you want to have that good airflow so that's an important point I think a lot of people miss with their roofs all right so inside here I just finished installing all the ceiling insulation now this is a really unique type of insulation that I used it's actually a hemp wool insulation it's made by Hempitecture you can google them um, they make all kinds of hemp batting and uh, hemp fiber insulation for walls and ceilings this stuff is really good I'm really happy with it it's totally non-toxic really easy to handle you don't need gloves you don't need a respirator and you just cut it with a either a table saw or a, a grinder with a metal bit, metal cutter. So I got all this insulation installed really quick. This is R28. So it's going to be quite insulated in here. And just once again, to reiterate that point, you can see that gap up there above the insulation bats have that gap so that the air can flow above the insulation if you don't have that air gap not only can the air not flow through your ceiling and out the ridge vent but you're gonna have moisture build up more than likely at some point and it'll build up and set on your insulation and uh, cause mold and degradation now this hemp fiber wool is really good too because it's mold resistant but you still don't want to have that situation where you have moisture building up inside your roof that airflow is going to prevent moisture from building up so that's really important so now i'm over at the shed which is already built i'm going to show you what these soffits will look like for the tiny house so it's really basic what I do. I like to leave the entire section open for airflow. And I put either a quarter inch or half inch um, wire mesh all up, over top of an aluminum bug screen. So do your bug screen and then your thicker gauge wire mesh over that. So that's going to keep bugs out, but allow air to flow through, up through the ceiling, and then out that ridge vent. 